And thank you, Jonathan, for that selection. What a blessing. What a blessing. John the Revelator. John saw things that it was hard for him to describe, and, but he penned them in the book of Revelation for our understanding, to give us hope for a future event, a prepared place that we will all find our rest, eternal rest, those who have made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior. John the Revelator writes in chapter 21, begin reading at verse 1. And I saw, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. These words are designed to give us hope. Hope is a future tense of an event that we believe will happen. And so we receive these words in faith, believing that we shall receive everything the word says. We thank God for the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
we all have grieving hearts. Grief affects our heart with an indescribable pain when someone we love dies. Anguish can linger late into the night with tears drenching our pillows. We hold tight with an unrelenting promise to never ever let their memory fade until we meet them again someday. We are stricken, stricken with grief, with an unwillingness to turn our attention away from anything that will bring us comfort. So we, we, we wade through the tears with regret of living without them. How? How can we hide these tears of sorrow and continue to function with a assurance when our hearts are breaking in pieces? No one seems to notice that we are absent from our daily routine because they have moved on. But here we are. We are paralyzed from our loss. Grief is a lonely place. We isolate in pain away from family who feels the same. Nevertheless, we are all affected differently. So some days are quiet and calm and other days are raging with a violent storm that wages war against our soul. We are abandoned with grief. And no one seems to identify with our sorrow. Who, who can heal our grieving heart? Isaiah penned this in the Old Testament. Understanding what was going to take place in the future tense. So God Almighty already knew that this day would come and these words are penned for our understanding and to aid in the comfort of our hearts. Isaiah wrote 50, 53, chapter 53, verse 3. Identifying with our pain. Identifying with our grief. These words are written. <coughs> he he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Jesus understands our grief because he endured affliction throughout his 33 years of life. He suffered the pains of this world when he took on our sin upon his shoulders and carried our burdens to the cross. Jesus was rejected, denied, and abandoned with our guilt and shame. He suffered agony alone and accepted the wrath that we deserve. Jesus completely understands when we lose someone we love. His good friend Lazarus became sick and died. We find words written according to the Gospel of John, chapter 11. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord 
with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. This particular verse is written for what will take place prior to the death of Jesus in preparation for his burial. So we understand that line upon line, precept upon precept, that the word of God is intertwined to give us comfort and strength and help us understand the mystery of the gospel because it was revealed in Jesus Christ himself. And so it continues to read, Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Word was sent, a messenger, dispatched to go find Jesus and tell Jesus that uh, his friend, his beloved friend, Lazarus, is sick. Come quick. Come quick, Jesus. Lazarus is sick. Fast forward. We go to chapter 11, verse 17, and we read, Then when Jesus came, he found that he had laid laying in the grave for four days. Lazarus was dead. He, he died. By the time the messenger got to Jesus, Lazarus was already dead. And they had already performed the burial and he was in the grave. So by the time Jesus arrived, four days had passed. Jesus was detained so he could show the miraculous resurrection power that he had within himself. Let us fast forward again to verse 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died because I know that you would have healed him. You could have cured him. Oftentimes when we have a family member laying on a bed of affliction and we lift up prayers and we send our petition to the Lord, we're praying and interceding for their healing. And oftentimes when it doesn't occur, our hearts are grief, grieved like Martha. Lord, had you been here, our brother would not have done. We grieve, Lord. God is all powerful. He can do all things. But don't you know that the ultimate healing comes when we die and we're resurrected? No more sorrow. John the Revelator wrote that in Revelation 21. I just read that. No more death. No more tears. And no more pain. And so it continues to read, but I know, Martha says, that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. I know that you have a direct line to the heavenly Father, Jesus, and even though Lazarus is in the grave, that whatever you say, the, the Father will hear you. Jesus responds. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall Rise again. Martha said unto him, with an understanding heart, I know that he should rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He goes on to say, and whosoever, speaking about us who are still alive, breathing the breath of life, here we are currently. He says, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believe it thou this. Brothers and sisters, there will come a time when life on this side of Jordan will cease to exist. And we must cross over into the promised land. And when we do, we know we'll see our Heavenly Father face to face. We'll be in that place called paradise. No more death. No more sickness. No more sorrow. So Jesus understands our grief. He knows the heaviness of our heart because he's experienced it with Lazarus. He experienced it many times seeing how he was a compassionate man and he looked out over the people as I looked out over you and he felt their heart. 
God knows the intent of the heart. So he can read each and every one of us individually and know the heaviness, what we feel inside. So he knows how you feel. You're not alone. The Lord is ever so close to you. Feel his presence. Recognize his spirit. The Lord is here. And so he knew then that we would be gathered here today feeling this way. And he knew what his disciples would feel when they saw him hanging on the cross for our sins. And so after the Lord, the introduction of the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, he said after washing his disciples' feet in preparation to go to the cross, he, he humbled himself as a servant. He showed humility before he went to the cross to be raised up on high. He knew the effects of his death, how they would feel, how they would be burdened, heavy laden with the sorrow from his death. He began to share with them in the gospel of John chapter 14, verse 1 saying, let not, brothers and sisters, let not, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. He's making a promise. He's making a state. He's conditioning our heart to receive the blessing that is in store for us. That which to come. That prepared place that we're going to go for those who are united with him. Who are covered in the blood. You shall never die. Isn't that what uh, chapter 11 said? I am the resurrection and the life. You believe it in me? Praise the Lord. That's assurance. That's comfort right there. That's an understanding that we know because Sister Martha had a relationship with Jesus. That she was baptized at Covenant Life Church in Jeffersonville, enjoyed worship at Second Baptist Church in Charlestown, loved the Lord, loved people, demonstrated his love by the way she lived her life then we understand that he called her name on the day that she left time and entered into eternity to be at rest with our Heavenly Father. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Just for you. Isn't it? God is so personal. See, you got to have a personal relationship. He knows us. How well do we know him? We spend so much time ripping and running, trying to attain things that's going to rot and break apart and of no value at all. And we spend time with people who only love us when we can do for them. But when we need them, they're not, they're, they're not there for us. But we don't pursue a relationship with Jesus like we should to get to know him. To be able to have that love and that comfort, that understanding that the Lord is ever present. Uh, ever present help in a what time of need such as this. We need to get to know him. He knows us, but we, we don't know him. How much time? How much time do we spend with the Lord? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. We can always stand on the promises of God. His words are for sure. We understand that he is here today. He understands our grieving heart. He feels every pain in this room. Only I can look into the eyes and see it, but he feels them. All of our pain. 
and he cares deeply for each and every one of us. My prayer for you, family and friends today, is that you draw close to the Lord, that you give him your grieving heart and allow him to give you the comfort that only he can. Trust him. He's there for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Father, we honor you and we thank you for the free gift of salvation in Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Father, we come on behalf of the Horton family, family and friends who are gathered to celebrate the life of Martha. Father God, their hearts are heavy. I lift them, each and every one of them, up to you praying and asking your blessing of comfort over their hearts, mind, and spirit. Father, Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, not as the world give it, but as I give it. So Father, may the peace of Jesus Christ guard their heart and mind in Christ Jesus and give them the comfort they need. May they be able to persevere and live in honor of my body. And Father, always keep her memory alive. Because the bodies will cease to exist, but the spirit never dies. So, Father, bless the family and friends here today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.